General Manager of the Year is always a weird award because, as you all well know, things that general managers do sometimes don't show up till two, three, four, maybe five years down the road. But early candidate for GM of the Year has to go to Jim Benning so far. Has he whiffed on anything, Doug? From 2014 to 2021, Jim Benning's Vancouver Canucks made two postseason appearances winning one single playoff series. His tenure was filled with confusion, anger, and low expectations, creating great divide within the Canucks fan base. But as Vancouver appears to have entered a new era, Benning is largely responsible for the team's current core. Quinn Hughes, Brock Besser, JT Miller, Thatcher Demko, and Elias Pettersson are all Benning acquisitions, and he does deserve credit, but despite all of those names, there's a certain consensus around his tenure, with many chalking it up as a failure. Besser sweeps the puck to the point to Garland. Long shot, blocked. In this video, we are going to explore the highs and lows of Jim Benning's stint with the Vancouver Canucks, and if you wouldn't mind subscribing to our channel or maybe even leaving a like on this video, that would be so much appreciated. Another side note, if you have any general managers who you'd like to see us cover, you can comment them below. We're going to be about hard work. We're, we're going to work hard to try to get this thing you know, back in the right direction. So. You know, if that's what needs to be done, we're going to do it. Benning was hired in May of 2014 after Vancouver missed the postseason for the first time in six years. Jim had spent the previous eight seasons as an assistant general manager in Boston. Prior to that, he'd spent 12 years with the Buffalo Sabres, eight of which as their director of amateur scouting. For me, it was all about having someone that had experience at all levels who was a talent evaluator, whether it be amateur or pro, and, and someone who had built, built teams, who was a builder. And so those were critical must-haves. In other words, Benning was signed with the intention of initiating a rebuild, and the first domino to fall in executing that plan came with Ryan Kessler. Let's talk about the Ryan Kessler trade. Uh, they pick up Lucas Sabiza, they get Nick Benino, they get the 24th overall pick in the draft. What do you think? Well, I think that Jim Benning did very well, considering that his hands were relatively tied with respect to Ryan Kessler determining where he was going to go. Benino's stint was short, Sabiza was somewhat underwhelming, and Jared McCann would never reach his peak in Vancouver. But putting aside future mismanagement, the trade in itself at a face value was relatively admirable. To coincide, Jason Garrison was also shipped out at the 2014 draft, while the Canucks acquired Derek Dorsett and Lyndon Vay at high prices. Talking about that draft specifically, it was a pretty impressive pull for the Canucks, though Vancouver would fail to reap the benefits on most of their selections. Vertanen was a bust, we already touched on McCann, and Gustav Forsling was swiftly traded within the year, but nabbing Thatcher Demko in the second round was a considerable win. Turning to free agency, where Benning signed Redeem Verbata to a short-term deal, Ryan Miller was inked to a three-year contract, and Chris Tanev was re-upped for one year at only $2 million. So the 2014-15 NHL season comes and Vancouver bounces back into the playoffs largely thanks to Benning's offseason moves. That year, Benning also made a string of prospect swap trades attempting to bring more NHL-ready youngsters to the Canucks, but none of them really worked out. Regardless, there was a certain praise for Benning's efforts across the NHL, though Vancouver would ultimately lose out to the fiery Calgary Flames in round one. Progressing to the 2015 offseason, Vancouver took Brock Besser at the NHL draft, Eddie Lack was traded for two draft picks, Kevin Bieksa was traded for a second round pick, Zach Cassian was swapped for Brandon Prust, and Nick Bonino was traded for Brandon Sutter in a confusing deal that Vancouver easily lost. Maybe the idea was to use these players as affordable trade assets down the road, but that certainly never came to fruition.
Changing gears, the 2015-16 season marked the beginning of a four-year stretch where Vancouver repeatedly missed the postseason. So, for this portion of the video, we are going to transition to a rapid-fire segment highlighting Benning's most significant moves during this time frame. Benning trades Jared McCann, a second and fourth round pick to Florida, acquiring Eric Goodbranson in exchange. Vancouver drafts Ole Ulevi, fifth overall at the NHL draft, passing on the likes of Matthew Kachuk, Clayton Keller, and Mikhail Sergachev. Louis Erickson is signed to a six-year, $36 million contract. Jacob Markstrom signs a three-year, $11 million contract. Willie Desjardins is fired. Couldn't be more pleased with how everything has unfolded. Willie ticks all the boxes we're looking for. Uh. Travis Green is hired. Uh. Benning selects Elias Pettersson, fifth overall at the NHL draft. Bo Horvat is signed to a six-year, $36 million contract. Benning trades Thomas Vanek to Columbus, failing to acquire youth or draft picks in return. Quinn Hughes is drafted 7th overall at the NHL Draft. Sven Berchi is extended to a 3-year, $10 million contract. Jay Beagle signs a 4-year, $12 million contract. Antoine Roussel signs a 4-year, $12 million contract. Benning admits defeat, trading Eric Goodbranson to Pittsburgh in exchange for Tanner Pearson. Picking things back up for the 2019 offseason, where Benning would make a significant trade. Just prior to that year's draft, the Canucks acquired JT Miller from the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for a first and third round pick, as well as Merrick Mazinek. This trade was huge for the Canucks, who subsequently drafted Nils Hoglander and Arthur Seelovs the following day, talking Pud Colson, who knows what's going on there. Come July 1st of 2019, Benning made another jaw-dropping move in signing Tyler Myers to a 5-year, $30 million contract. At 29 years old, I don't think anyone was a fan of the term on this deal, and now that the contract is coming to a close, I think it's fair to say that Myers underperformed, but to his credits, he's been relatively healthy for the last three seasons while playing 20 plus minutes a night, so I guess Yes, Vancouver at least got some use out of him. Touching on the 2020 NHL season, Vancouver crawled out of their funk, making the playoffs thanks to the NHL's COVID-themed play-in round. In a first-round matchup against the St. Louis Blues, Vancouver got rounded scoring and decent goaltending, helping them to take the series in six games. In their following second-round matchup against the Vegas Golden Knights, Vancouver found themselves down 3-1 in the series when Thatcher Demko stood on his head through Games 5 and 6, making 89 combined saves on 90 shots. In a decisive Game 7, however, Vancouver unfortunately ran out of gas. This right here was the peak of Vancouver's success during the Benning era. In the following shortened NHL season, Vancouver took a massive step back, finishing dead last in the NHL's Canadian division. In attempt to shake things up, Benning made another massive trade, sacrificing high draft picks to ditch salary while also acquiring Oliver ekman Larson and Connor Garland. But as Vancouver stumbled out of the gate in the following season, Benning was relieved of his duties, ending his tenure in Vancouver. Wrapping up this video with a somewhat controversial statement, to me, Benning's most blaring success came at the NHL Draft. If he was hired to build and mold a team for the future, I'd say he and his scouting staff accomplished that. To draw a parallel to our previous video about Brad Tree living in the Calgary Flames, when it comes to drafting, the bar was indeed low in Vancouver, but Benning managed to pull significant prospects in five of eight drafts. Taking a step back though, his selection of Ole Ulevi in 2016 was a catastrophic error. 
Building on that point, more criticism comes in Benning's mismanagement of draft picks and youth. Trading Jared McCann and Gustav Forsling while acquiring Sven Berchi are all head-scratchers in hindsight, pointing to a lack of patience and poor prospect assessment. But my biggest point of judgment on the Benning era comes down to contract negotiations. Tyler Myers, Antoine Roussel, Brandon Sutter, Jay Beagle, Louis Erickson, and Michael Delzato were all signed to brutal contracts, though some were obviously worse than others. In signing such players, Benning repeatedly failed to bring meaningful depth pieces to Vancouver, instead overpaying on often aging players. In retrospect, there's a lot worth judging, and I understand the disgust which is often associated with his name, but again, if it was his job to build and mold the next cup contending version of the Canucks, and if this 2023-2024 season is the beginning of repeated playoff runs, I'd say he succeeded. Five years from now, who knows what it will look like, but for What's Happening Hockey, I'm Tate Laycraft.